good afternoon and welcome to a special episode of Think Tank Thursday. I am Candy Kelly of Trainertainment and will not exactly be your host today. This episode is our second part of our live recordings from the Trainertainment Sales and Business Pro Conference that took place in April, April 26th through the 28th. We loved being able to share expertise from our industry partners with the attendees of that conference. Um, we did that in two ways. We had a day where they had their own presentations, their own educational content that they shared with all of the attendees. And then at the end of each day, um, we did a live Q&A where we answered questions from the attendees. And that is what we're sharing with you today. The expert panel that you're going to see on today's episode, it consists of Jeff Kalinick from McGowan Allied Specialty Insurance. You have Jackie Hagar from Hagar Communications. Um, you have Scott Kennedy from Creative Works, Beth Stanley from Trainertainment, Neil Farron, which is an operator from Strikes Entertainment. And then you'll see John Keyes from InBed. He'll pop in there a little bit after we start. So that is who the panel consists of for this episode. Again, Big shout out and thanks to Redemption Plus, Simnox, Embed, Betson, Party Center Software for allowing us to bring these Think Tank episodes and to share in your growth journey by providing you information along the pathway. Okay, well, we hope you enjoy our second ever live Q&A episode that was recorded in front of a conference audience. Hi, I'm John Keyes with Embed. Hi, I'm Jeff Kalenet with McGowan Allied Specialty Insurance. Jackie Hager, Hager Communications. Scott Kennedy, Creative Works. Beth Stanley, Try Entertainment. Neil Farron, Strikes Entertainment. Well, I'm so excited because if it's Thursday, it is Think Tank, and we got a bunch of friends in the tank today. I'm so, so tickled. We are just finishing up with our two-day um, pro conference session. Gosh, guys, we learned a ton about sales. Yes. Woo! And how to run our businesses. Woo! Woo! Better. And set big goals. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 And, um, and now we're here to answer some uh, questions and provide a little bit of fun, maybe. And we so thank our digital sponsors. And yay, if it's Thursday, it's Think Tank. Let's get started. The first question, we have a couple of questions, and then we will um, wrap it up. The first one is, do you see subscription fees, Scott, I think you may be good on this, becoming the norm for content updates with gaming? Mm. Oh, we didn't even introduce everybody. Oh. Yeah. Scott, you're answering questions, we're going to introduce yourself. Okay, so uh, my name is Scott Kennedy, I'm with Creative Works. Um, as far as subscription fees go, are we like kind of referring to... Um, say within the arcade realm where you have um, Typhoon, for example, where they, they launched a product, they continue to add titles to it, but in order to create new content, they added more, uh, uh, basically That's requested okay. a subscription fee to be able to add that, mm -hmm. something along those lines. Just wanted to clarity. Um, so yes, I, I think that the industry can continue to grow that way. Um, as we uh, see VR growing, um, one of the things that you'll continue to see is People are wanting more games on their platforms in order to have that and be able to create that. The, the vendors have to be able to have the funds to be able to support creating the new content. So having those subscriptions is important. Um, there's existing games out on the market. Um, you know, some of the top earners in the arcade realm that um, I think there would be a lot of value and a lot of operators would be willing to, to uh, pay. Uh, Jurassic Park is a great example of an arcade game that is making money upon money and has for a very long time. If uh, those, those vendors would take and uh, basically create new levels, I think operators would spend the money to be able to get that additional content to give that game a new rejuvenation. Well, right. Would it be cheaper to pay a subscription, a monthly <laughs> subscription, than to buy a new game every? No, year? I have Jurassic Park, and it's a great, great earner. Uh, always a great earner. I've always wondered why they didn't do that. Mm -hmm. I think I, I would definitely look at that probably... and, and add content. Great. Yeah. So our friends at Raw Thrills, if you hear us, we want more Jurassic Park content. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Can I just speak about, yeah, about the bar box? So Candy and I um, are in a group called The Collective. And so we have a couple of um, game distributors, Schaefer and ABS, and then Bob Cooney, who is the 
uh, VR guru and then train entertainment. And um, we have a product that we brought to market at, at, at Amusement Expo called Barbox. And it is a standalone VR product um, that doesn't require, uh, unattended, right? Mm -hmm. And you play it against people. There's app. There, I mean, it is incredible. Uh, there is a two and a half minute terrified zombie I'm getting killed by zombies video that I'm playing and um, it's fabulous. And, and I know our subscription does exactly what we're talking about. Uh, the subscription model helps with content, ongoing upgraded content. Uh, our company's involved because we're providing the um, online training portal, um, uh, providing a, a mastermind space for community managers and for owners so we're real we're real excited about it and i'm super excited to hear that uh an operator is willing to pay the, <laughs> the subscription fee that's very self-serving and, and happy to have the happy to have the input there thank you all right um jackie and don't forget to introduce yourself how does one decide their branding element Ooh. oh wow mm -hmm. wow well, I'm Jackie Hager, Hager Communications. Uh, we are proud to be sponsors uh, with Trainertainment. It's a great partnership. We learn something all the time. Being at these conferences allows us to, uh, you know, very busy operators, we get to hear firsthand what's going on inside their FECs, what's working, what's not. We get into the marketing realm. Branding element, you know, the, the idea to brand yourself is to is to let the public know you are the expert in your field. When it comes to family entertainment, no one can be what you house inside your four walls. From the moment the families walk in the door to disconnect from life, to create memories, um, to hear the laughs and the giggles running through the park, you know, you compete with a lot of FECs and pretty soon you're gonna be competing with camps and you're going to be competing with water parks and family right. reunions and backyard cookouts and and still rising grocery prices and rising gas prices so you've got to make sure that you're branded as the expert in your town now how do you do that you do that lots of ways you do that by constantly letting people know that just getting their payroll or their money to form a service, uh, you go way beyond that. You, you listen to your moms, you listen to your dads, you listen to those young ones running around your FEC. What do they love about you? What can you constantly improve on? What type of guest experience you're giving? It's all of that wrapped up into telling your story as we discussed today, the why that you opened up this FEC or whatever business you own that you might be listening to this what is the why that you brought this incredible gift of mm -hmm. memories and fun to your community and that is all wrapped up into your branding elements so make a mission to become the expert in your community and i would dare say 30 to 50 miles around your community that the play begins and ends at your location Oh, I love that. That sounds like a good tagline. Yeah. The play begins and ends at our door. Yeah. Oh, that's a good I one. like that. Look, she can't help herself. It just comes I know, out. I, I know. <laughs> All right. Jeff, can you speak a little bit about the correlation between increasing insurance costs and trampoline mm -hmm. parks? And how do you maybe some tips to maintain? Ouch. Um, <laughs> it, Jeff Kalenic, McGowan Allied Specialty Insurance. Um, this is a question that I am constantly getting just from current customers right now, and particularly in the busy renewal time, um, as they, um, as we are seeing trampoline insurance clearly going going up. Um, and and the, and part of the part of the problem there is the, the people are calling me and say, "Well, Jeff, we've never had a claim on our trampoline park. Why are we going up?" Well, you're paying for the sins of others, right? It, it's in insurance. I well, <laughs> it, it, it's, it, 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 it's it's sad, but it's true. In insurance, it's it's the it's the law of numbers, right? And if you look at trampolines solely as a business segment, right? 
the, the exposure there is huge. The claims are astronomical right now. Think about what it costs to break an arm and, and take somebody to the hospital set, do whatever else has to be done. There's no such thing as, no such thing. Um, most claims, they're pretty big. And, and they start from that, you know, maybe the small, but go up depending on what happens to a few hundred thousand dollars, even off. So even though you may have a clean park now, the odds are something's probably gonna happen. And that particular silo, that business segment is getting hit. And, and right now I don't see that going away. As a matter of fact, I've had more people talk about getting out of the trampoline and putting something else in there recently than I have people saying, I wanna get into the trampoline side of things. Um, it, it, it's kind of a double-edged sword, but we, we were talking uh, just the, the other day. There are those that are willing to pay for that because it's an attraction that people want uh, yeah. and they are paying for it. It just, it's unfortunate that right now there's probably three insurance carriers covering the trampoline space. Wow. And, mm. and, a couple of years ago, there were 10, 15 or so. So it's getting tighter and tighter. If, if you want to see things go down, then as a community, that space as a community has to work on risk management and safety Amen. And, Amen. and create a better track record going forward of claims and claim management. And that makes sense. And that's even a branding element too, to be known not only as you know, the most entertaining FEC, but the safest yeah, FEC, because safety has to be number one. So that's where insurance and marketing come in hand in hand. To, too. To, together, but unfortunately, yeah. as I share that, it's not going to drive your insurance down today, yeah. right? Yeah. John Keyes, I'm glad you joined us late. <laughs> Sorry, I'm late. <laughs> it's okay. With an arcade card, um, what are some tips for reminding customers of their benefits so they see the value and that, like, the, you were talking about the VIP programs mm -hmm. and stuff, which entices them to come back more to use those benefits? Because a lot of people can just buy a card or register their card and then they don't know what they get for it. Right. Well, I mean, a lot of it, you can, you can have signage, you can leverage social media, but I think we talked about this earlier today. It's having your ambassadors, having your people excited, walking up to people and saying, hey, did you know that if you do this, you can get extra bonus? Or did you know for birthday parties, did you know that every kid has a $5 card that they get to, can bring back their family with? So I think that's where you can really have a lot of fun and get your team members excited and really advocating. Uh, it's that personal touch that I think makes a huge difference. Uh, I would certainly refer to that. And there's always a time in Think Tank where we can promote the book, People Buy From People. That was a perfect, <laughs> that was a perfect, uh, that was a perfect yeah, point. Yeah, I know that. Right. Here we go. So what you're saying, John, what you're saying is <laughs> that people buy from people, right? Yeah, and yeah, exactly. that if you could connect personally in an impersonal world, that'd be the very best way to help people know what yeah. to do with their card Absolutely. and why they should register. Absolutely. Okay. You'll give them the 50 after. <laughs> Yeah. But I think the important thing about this is a lot of younger people are so used to communicating via Twitter and yes. their phones, they don't understand that in engagement. And so sometimes that's, uh, we don't just tell them, you have to kind of get them excited about it and get them involved. With it. Love it. I almost say you have to show them what the engagement looks like now. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. yeah. Their engagement involved the cell phone. Right. <laughs> all right. All right. This is for all of you, and we'll start on the side. What is your favorite productivity hack that you've learned over the years? Oh. Mm. Productivity hack. Yeah. I even need a definition of that. Oh, it keeps nice. you productive in line. The thing that has worked for you. I it could be an app, it could be technology, it could be anything. Just have a planner, write stuff on a legal pad. <laughs> I guess that's about it. No, I mean, I, I don't have a productivity app. I, I guess I'm a little older generation. So, uh, so um, no, I mean, it, it, everything goes down on notepad for me or on notes in my, in my phone. That's what I keep everything on. 
Do you use Do you use Evernote? No, just a simple note on. Note on your note. Yep. Uh, so he does have an app for that. He does have an app for that. <laughs> the yellow that. legal pad. <laughs> I, I bet if if we could say everybody out there listening, raise your hand if you're the yellow legal pad hack, we would have a lot of yeah, we have a lot of yellow hands up. Sorry, a lot of yellow legal pad hacks. Full focus planner. I, I I've always used a I have always used a planner in my lifetime. I I started well maybe even in junior high, uh, but definitely in 1990 I started using. Um, uh, Oh my gosh, Covey. Daytimer. Day uh huh. Covey, uh, Covey bought them out. I, I, I totally forgot it. But anyway. You go at the store in the mall? Where uh huh. You yes. Yeah. 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 So I've always used a planner. I obviously on my, I don't use a planner today for my calendar. I, I use a, a Gmail calendar and I live and die by appointments and schedule time to do my tasks or they don't get done. Uh, but yes, I'm full focus planner certified and I love since 2019 I've been using the full focus planner system uh, by Michael Hyatt and to really focus on the top three things I need to do this week I relate to the top three things I need to get done for the quarter that relate to the top three things I need to get done for the year. So. For me, it's probably uh, just uh, you know the Gmail calendar. And then uh, just my task management software that we use uh, within our company to keep me on, you know, making sure I'm staying in contact with people and staying on top of uh, having those meetings and talking to, talking to our clients. You guys use Rike. Mm -hmm. okay. I like to give people, you know, tips of what apps they can go and check out if they're looking for something. So For us, uh, for our office, it's no doubt our Gmail calendar, but it's also our team leadership meetings that we have every Tuesday morning. And well, that's not an app. That is the way I feel that I get most production done from a CEO perspective of where are we and uh, in the week and where, where are we on projects and with clients. And so, uh, you know, you, you just have to trust your team that they're getting yeah. it done and which allows me more space in my head to be the dreamer of the company to decide what is our next step and where are we going. So that's good. And, you know, mine is, is, is actually not technology. It's not an app. And, and what I, what's really helped and changed my thinking and productivity over the past year, it has been delegation. Okay, letting go of the reins. I've got a great technical team behind me. They are awesome, right? Mm -hmm. But we all want to own our all of our stuff, all of our problems, all of the good, bad, and in between. I don't like the amount of candy. I can't be here today, right? If I'm not delegating and I don't have those people that I can trust to take care of it. And it was hard for me to let go. Yeah. It's hard to let go. And and so delegating, it, it actually became something that I had to become consistent with. Oh. I have, I've been able to let go. And because of it, I'm at events like this. I'm traveling more than I have ever probably in my career. Um, so, so again, all the credit goes to, to my great team. And my ability now to delegate and know it's being done. It's a great All right, I'm going to get a little techy, a little geeky. Um, I used to be the same. I used to use notepads, and I just had it because I could organize it, move it, cross things out. And then I discovered Notepad, which is a Microsoft app. It allows you to put just notes down in free form, and I could put dates on this. And so I have this for all of all of our strategic customers, all of my meetings. I can keep track. And go back to that, and then it's easy enough that I could cut and paste because I just put everything into Word and then email it. And then you have to try and manage it. Oh. So this, uh, if you haven't tried it, it's it's part of Office 365. Uh, very powerful. The other one, I just need that one more. I just discovered this. It's called uh, the Snippet. Oh yeah, it's a little snippet it's tool. Awesome. Amazing. <laughs> you can take a picture of a little thing that you need. And I don't have to worry about saving it to a right file and everything else. It's really great when you're doing and you're sending something via email or otherwise. It's just that's productivity. So you can kind of keep things moving, but you know where they are. All right. 
Candy, you should answer for our company. I, I forgot to say Zoho. I, I mean, all of our productivity and project management and CRM, all that stuff, we, we couldn't do that. And then I finally did remember my Franklin. I use a Franklin plan oh, yeah, for, for years. Yeah. Two more questions. This one is, what is the best piece of advice you've ever received? Well, I, 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 oh my gosh, I need so much advice. Um, I, I would, I would say maybe uh, I have two ears and one mouth, and I should listen twice as much as I talk. I'm still working on that, um, and I think probably, probably Nancy's sincere ability to teach me to always be more curious and, and ask what what else is so about that? What else could be true? I think that might be right up there at the top. So I think for me, uh, being a people pleaser and always just trying to want to make people happy, one of the best pieces of advice that was ever given to me was sometimes you just owe it to yourself to be selfish and you got to take care of yourself first. And uh, that was a really hard thing for me to accept because I always wanted to take care of everybody else and put everybody else as the priority. Well, for me, uh, I mentioned it yesterday in this group, a couple of things. Number one, um, I've had to take my health back this past year. So that kind of goes along with what you said, uh, you know, take care of yourself. But number two, you know, my dad always said, you know, God gives us talents, do what you do well, hire done what you cannot do. Oh so that you do not stress yourself out. So acknowledge what your gift is and seek help outside of that. That's cool. great advice. Um, my, mine actually comes from, from my mentor when I first got in, into sales in my early, early 20s. And it is stuck with me. I share it all the time. I still use it today. Um, and, and, and that is respond, don't react. Oh, ah, and uh -huh. and you know I it, God love the guy still very very close but taught me how to take a breath respond to something don't react that's a good one uh, yeah. and <laughs> and I have appreciated that little <laughs> bit of advice through my entire <laughs> my entire sales career because how many times do we get ourselves in a situation where yeah. Your blood pressure goes through the roof, and we want to react, right? Oh, yeah. And it's like, hmm, remember what Tom told me? I still actually even have a little thing by my computer. Respond. And even if even if it means, can I call you back in an hour? Or That's or right. Good one. Think about this? My sticky note says, wait, wait, <laughs> wait. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> nothing good comes out of reacting. That's almost like don't push send on the email. Yeah, hold right. up, hold up. Yep. Don't push send. Read yeah. it in the morning. Read, Read it in the morning. Yeah. Um, I one that I've always uh, thought is uh, I'm always working and I'm always playing, uh, and I have to remind myself of that. It's like to to keep the fun in life. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I also have this is a, a sign that my dad had in his office, and I actually have the same the sign on my wall. Right next to like Winston Churchill, uh, it says the uh, the world owes you a living, but you have to work like hell to collect it. Oh, oh nice. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Neil. I mean, I guess mine was just is actually my dad as world model. I mean, how he worked his uh, worked in hard work. You know, you, you know, if you do the hard work, uh, reward will come. What, what is that? That luck is spelled W O R K. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, 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 yeah. 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 All right. For our last question, I'm going to flip the script from Think Tank Thursday. We typically ask how people are growing on a consistent basis, but you guys have been at a pro conference for two days, so we know that you've been helping yourself grow on a consistent basis. I'm going to ask you, what do you do to relax? Oh, shoot. Oh. On a consistent basis. What is your thing that brings peace and some calmness? To yourself. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll start with that one because that one's an easy one for me. I live on a dairy farm. Yeah. 900 black and white Holstein cows. Now I drive into the city every day to run my office and leave my dairy farmer husband out there. Every Sunday afternoon, 
we, we do this thing called, we go back road. In other words, we get in the Chevy pickup truck with our favorite beverage and only drive the dirt roads, which are called the back roads and just unwind and tell each other what's really going on in our perspective work lives. That's good. That's good. There you go. Go back roads. <laughs> go back roads. Okay. I'll jump in there. Uh, you know what, for, for me, it, it's spending time with my kids. It, it's getting away, whether it was when they're a little bit younger, coaching, now watching them in, in their sports, their schooling, or whatever the case may be, taking them, taking them fishing, hunting, camping, whatever the case may be. I mean, they are my oasis in getaway. away. Aww. <laughs> That's good. Well, I think there's two, I have two, oh, it's two things for me. Uh, <laughs> First off, and it's weird, I love to work in the yard. I love to pull weeds. There's nothing better in the morning. Oh, with a cup of John. Water. I know everybody <laughs> says that. You're stealing mine. <laughs> well, I want you to move to Texas. Okay. But being able to like wake up with a cup of coffee and walk outside, just kind of go putz around and pull weeds is great. The other one is that's, that I have to give my credit to my wife. Working at home has been challenging because you never leave. And even though I have an office and I can shut the door, what she's done is we play a lot of board games and card games and dice games and such. And so she'll tell me and she has to kind of pry me away. But if I can get out for that time, then the mindset changes. And then I kind of go, okay, yeah, I can wait until tomorrow to address those. So having that point of playing games and that's, more, like that's that. almost yeah. like getting in the car because we're having fun, we're talking. And yeah. uh, it's, that's been a really a, a great thing. And we're always on the hunt for new like dice games and card games. Okay. L, uh, you, you play left, right, center? Oh, LRC? Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> I, I really wasn't kidding. So my bride likes to refer to it as Scott's lawn care, which I'm like, okay, fine. Please don't like sue me for copyright or whatever, but that's what, what she calls it for. But anyway, uh, like, no, I love getting out in the lawn and it's just a time for me. I can throw on some headphones, listen to some music and just turn my brain off and just have fun. And then the second one is my beautiful two and a half year old daughter and just sitting up in a recliner and just us chilling on the couch and watching TV. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm still trying to learn how to drive. <laughs> 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 it's true. My kids have all said that I need to learn something. And I've never golfed or fished or anything. But from the kids' standpoint, they all work for me from age 15. They start at 15. They all, none of them are involved in the business now. They're all out in the career that they they have. But every Sunday, they pretty much they all live and move back to Dallas after college and have careers here. And they uh, um, they come over. They know Sunday afternoon. I grill, like blue I, grill, I grill out, <laughs> and at the beginning, I was very annoyed when they start stealing toilet paper and <laughs> bounty <laughs> and food. And finally, now I made it a purpose of just making as much as I can so they do kind of steal it and they just kiddingly take their trash and say, hey, you know, because they all live here, but away. So so that's yeah. young kids, old kids, they're all <laughs> 24 to 32. So they'll bring grandkid over and it's kind of a no, that's you know, a normal thing to do. As a matter of fact, I believe in town this weekend and one of them said, is Sunday still on? <laughs> oh, that's great. Yes, it is. I'll be back by then. So. Oh, well, so my idea of relaxing is doing something. And so it's a complicated question for me because I always imagine that what people mean by relaxing is maybe doing something like fishing uh, or hanging out on the beach or reading a book. And, um, but so I would say, I, I don't know. I, I I do enjoy a walk and I like to walk, but I, I use that as a double duty. You know, I'm getting my steps in and I'm listening to a book. And so I just don't know if that's what people would call relaxing. I'll go with hanging with my kids. Anytime I can get to go do anything with my kids or my sisters, um, I love to cruise. I love, love, love to cruise, but I don't know that people would claim what I do on a cruise as relaxing because I do just as much stuff as I can when I'm on it, but I just, I just love it. Um, I would say, so maybe that's it. My answer is 
playing is relaxing for me. That's what I do to relax is I go play. That's good. So, okay. All right. Everybody give them a round of applause. Are we doing it? Hold on. Remember? Oh, we're gonna do we're gonna do the dating game. So we're gonna oh, which hand? Which hand do we want to? We right use hand. right hand. Oh, remember right. how the dating game? Yeah. Right? Okay, ready? Go. go and throw the kiss. Ready? One, two, three. Stay <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> for a second. That was funny. Hopefully, we can edit that. <laughs> Wasn't that full of great questions and insight. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed doing it at the conference with the, with the such great experts. Do you have any questions that you would like to get answered? Remember, you can always email me at candy at trainertainment.net if you would like to be a guest on Think Tank or if you suggest a topic for a future Think Tank episode. Thanks for joining us this week. Keep growing. Hello, my name is Brittany Betty, and I am the Regional Sales Director and Business Development Manager over at Betson Enterprises. Here at Betson, we are so excited to be a part of Trainertainment this year. For those of you who are unaware of Betson and what we do, we are the leading distributor of coin-operated equipment, and we are a family-owned business that has been around for 85-plus years. Please take a moment to watch a quick video on an introduction on the phased approach and turnkey solution we can offer you in your facility. Thank you so much for taking the time for watching. And if you have any questions and would like to reach out to me, I can be reached at my email at bbetty, B-B-E-T-T-I, at betson, B-E-T-S-O-N dot com. Please feel free to reach out to me with any questions or needs you might have in the family entertainment industry, and I would be happy to assist you. Thank you and have a great day. Are you looking for ways to maximize profits and consolidate systems and processes? Join the Party Center Software and Party Center Pay family. Our suite of solutions makes it easy for you to run your family entertainment center or event business. Our online party booking system makes booking parties and events a breeze. Our point of sale system, digital waivers, and reports will help you simplify steps for your staff and make your guest experience seamless. Our online store allows you to sell products, gift certificates, and other services anytime, even when you're sleeping. But it doesn't end there. All of the solutions mentioned connect with our payment processing platform, Party Center Pay, making it easier than ever to manage your business not only can Party Center Pay save you money by cutting out extraneous fees, but Party Center Pay makes it easy to take online deposits or full payments, and we even have a contactless payment option. Paired with our incredible support team and dedicated customer success managers, growing and managing your business has never been easier. Schedule a call with us today to learn more. My wife and I, you know, this is a partnership with her and I, so we both agreed that, you know, in in creating scary strokes, um, that we want to make sure that we have the best available of everything.
you know, embed just seemed like the perfect fit. Like, you know, it was pretty streamlined and had the, the point of sales and the, the software for the redemption. And it just seemed, you know, natural to us. So we've been with embed since, since the very beginning. And so when, uh, when embed, you know, it was introducing the mobile wallet, it seemed like a good opportunity for us to, to jump on. And it's wonderful. I mean, you don't, <laughs> you reload your card from it. You, you know, redeem your tickets from it. There's nothing not to like about it. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's very convenient. And it's uh, very clever for sure. Empowering your employees to manage a redemption area with confidence can be a challenge. The redemption counter is often the last stop your customers make before leaving your facility. That's why we do everything we can to help your staff make that experience one worth returning for. Our service packages allow you to reap the benefits of expertise and customer support, no matter where your business is in its maturity. The advanced and pro service bundles are unmatched by any other redemption provider in the industry. They allow you to get the support you need when you need it. Gain confidence in your redemption program, knowing your employees are taking advantage of benefits like exclusive redemption training, regular planogram refreshes, product performance and spending reports, and much more. All accessible from an online portal customized to your business. Learn more at services.redemptionplus.com.